Good morning, everyone. Good morning. When I first heard the terms form-based codes, I wasn't sure whether it was a CIA term or a sculpture technique. Uh, but now, as a developer, when I think of form-based codes, I think of walkable places. One walkable place that we've had, we've been involved in, we've had tremendous success with, is the Gateway Quarter. In a housing market that's as bad as anyone can remember, in our first two phases of 110 condos, since March of 2007, we've sold over 75% of those condos. We're under construction with 100 more of those right now, and just in February alone, we had over 50 new prospects that we've converted into eight new contracts in the last two weeks. You're not hearing that kind of news anywhere else. If you are, let me know because we'll also go there. Where's the gateway quarter? The gateway quarter isn't over the Rhine. Surprise. Um, we've also had tremendous retail success. We've had 26,000 square feet in that first two phases. Almost all of it was leased within that first year and a half. We're expanding that to 40,000 in the next, the next group. In terms of crime success, over the ride was the worst, the worst of Cincinnati's 52 neighborhoods. It was an open air drug market in the last five years. If you said over the ride, people would say drugs, crime. Well, police will tell you a 3% increase or decrease is a statistically significant number. And from January 2006 to January 2007, we saw a 85% decrease in violent crime and a 65% overall decrease in crime. All these things are creating a street life, a feel of a neighborhood, and giving us momentum as we move forward. So what I want to do today is talk to you about the Gateway Quarter and the recipe for success that we've, what we've seen in terms of making it a walkable place. Number one is the focus. You have to create a sense of place. From there, you talk about where the, where literally where the, the rubber hits the road, where the building hits the road, and talk about the storefronts. And number three, how do you talk about an authentically walkable neighborhood that Scott started to introduce? Before, before I can tell you about the success, I have to t share with you the problem and the obstacles we had to overcome. Over the Rhine is, in the orange you see, 110 city blocks. Well, that's not a place. That's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten places. And so we had to overcome that. The other, the other issue that we had was the perception of crime in Over the Rhine. As I said, if you mentioned Over the Rhine, your next words were probably drugs. And the only thing worse than the perception was the reality. There were, only, there were over 500 vacant buildings, a 4% home ownership rate, and as I said, open air drug market. So number one, creating a walkable place. We focused. In 2003, the Cincinnati Center City Development Corporation said, our task is to revitalize over the Rhine, but we can't do 110 city blocks. And thank goodness for that. They focused on really five by five blocks, 25 blocks. And they started uh, partnering with the police and the sheriffs, but I don't want to talk, get into all those issues uh, with you today. Because I know you're interested in the street life. And then in 2005, 2006, they started talking to three developers. Our company was one of them. And we decided business as usual isn't going to work. I can't develop a property, go out and sell it to someone with the problems that I just talked about in this neighborhood. There probably wasn't a comp for the last 50 years, frankly. So we decided we needed to come together, and we, weren't, we couldn't even talk about five by five blocks. We had to talk about the yellow. And that yellow area is where we started. Just to get your, your bearings, this is over the Rhine. This is the, uh, the area just above the Central Business District. This is Central Parkway here. Central Parkway, Liberty Street above. We were talking about 12th and Vine. We're focusing on those four blocks in our first two phases. Mm -hmm. There's a laser pointer. Oh, okay. There you go. Very nice. So we're talking about this area right here. We had anchors in uh, Music Hall, Memorial Hall, Washington Park, School for Creative Reforming Arts, the Art Academy. But we couldn't do it. We couldn't do it by focusing even here or here 
we had to focus here. We came together, we said we can do better as a group, and we hired one broker, we hired one sales team, and we said we can't sell over the Rhine, we have to differentiate ourselves from over the Rhine. We created a brand called the Gateway Quarter. The Gateway Quarter for us uh, was our first initial attempt at the idea or focusing the sense of place that was not just over the Rhine, it was a subset of that. So that's number one. Number two, once you have your brand and your idea and your focus, the next thing you can focus on is the actual built environment itself. And so we, what we did was we took these old nasty buildings and turned them into great condo spaces. This is one that I worked on with Jeff, uh, Jeff Racer and Glazer Works. But if the condos are the body and the, and the guts of your development in your neighborhood, your retail and your storefront spaces where the buildings hit the street is the character and the face of it. And so your blocks are determined, the character of your blocks are determined by your, those storefront spaces. And with that, that in mind, this is what we were dealing with. All these buildings are in our first couple phases. Boarded up buildings, if we were lucky. Here's another one that wasn't boarded up. That was a little mini mar on the corner. I'm sure many of you have seen some of those in your neighborhoods where they were selling anything but legal, legal wares. <laughs> So what we had to do was we had to take, we had to change the character of our street. And we took buildings that were boarded up and started to open up the glass and open them back up to the street. I'm just going to flip through a few here, notice some before and afters. But as you look at these, really look at the glass. We opened everything back up, simple storefront treatments, but how does it communicate with the street? This is a great example where the lines become real blurry between stores and the street and sidewalks. Here's another good example. Drawing people in, and here's another great shot. When you're inside this store, you feel like you're on the street. You feel like you're on the sidewalk, and that's how it should feel. Another thing to keep in mind here is we had great success in creating a sense of place because we were very picky, very choosy about who we allowed in our spaces. We turned a lot of people away. When you see this picture, what do you think of? What's the problem here? Quick, what's the problem? People on the street, right? When I show this picture, people are like, oh, there's guys on the corner. That's not the problem here. The problem here is the built environment that creates an environment that you're going to, uh, you've got a building like this, a non-contributing architectural structure that's cinder block, no communication with the street whatsoever. You're going to get tenants like that, which are going to lead to activity like this. This is an example of one of the projects we're developing right now at 14th and Vine, called 14th and Vine, at Trinity Flats and Trinity Flats, where at two corners,